Of course, all of this happening at a time when the national security legislation is being written in Beijing. Where do you see Hong Kong in the next few years? Uh, one country, two system in Hong Kong is strongly eroded by Beijing to one country, one system. It's now Beijing who broke the promise of the Sino-British Joint Declaration, the International Treaty Register at United Nations, and erodes on Hong Kong basic freedom, and also strongly affected the business interests of foreign company and country around the world. Joshua, so what are you and your allies doing in order to have a say in this conversation? Are you reaching out to pro-establishment people? How are you trying to influence where this goes? Uh, not only protester or dissident might be affected by the EFO national security legislation. Even businessmen, uh, lots of um, tycoons or journalists were also affected because uh, free flow of information and the free flow of capital might be affected in the name of national security, and it will be just serving the interests of Beijing. As we know that uh, no matter uh, United States or how European Union being China's most significant trading partner and having made the third most investment in Hong Kong, but once the national security law implemented in Hong Kong, it will just strongly damaging Hong Kong's status as the global financial center. It's not only the matter of political freedom, it's also the matter of economic freedom will be strongly affected. So how are you trying to influence this conversation and where this is headed? Who are you talking to? Uh, this uh, this is a good question. And today is the 31st anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. Uh, and also is the first time in Hong Kong history, no matter before, after the transfer of sovereignty, uh, Hong Kong authorities banned our peaceful demonstration and assembly at Victoria Park to commemorate the student during the Tiananmen Square massacre. And now we are urging not only Hong Kong local community or businessmen born or live in Hong Kong to support us, but also international allies to stand with Hong Kong, to safeguard Hong Kong being the only territories to commemorate the Tiananmen Square massacre. And only Hong Kong should be the city that deserves freedom and a certain uh, liberal value that we all we cherish. Joshua does, Joshua, does there need to be a rethink for the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong? Because uh, critics would say that after the 2014 protests, after the 2019 protests, one of the reasons why we've ended up here is because of the lack of organisation and leadership and strategy from your side. Uh, we never blame the victim, and it's crystal clear that uh, last September, with more than 2 million Hong Kongers talked to the street, we successfully uh, forced Beijing to completely withdraw the controversial extradition bill. But I just have to make a clear point. Uh, compared to the 2019 extradition bill, at least still go through the legislation process in Hong Kong. But right now, in 2020, the national security legislation uh, in Beijing just bypassed Hong Kong legislature. Even Hong Kong's lawmaker can't have a vote. And I think in Hong Kong, even we don't have a top-down commander to provide command for the protest movement. But the majority consensus to oppose this national security legislation is crystal clear. And we know uh, more than uh, 20 countries around the world, uh, no matter European Union uh, or some of the countries in the G7 or G20, they've already issued statements and criticizing the implementation of this law, which just erode on uh, the one country, two system framework in Hong Kong. And the most ironic thing is when Beijing suggested to in introduce this national security law, uh, one of the most uh, uh, vocal voice to support this legislation uh, around the world is North Korea. So we all know what's meant by authoritarian ideology and how the allies of Beijing. What kind of reform plans then, you know, are you planning at the moment? And what's your best case scenario at how this crisis can end? Political crisis must solve by political system reform. Hong Kong people are not asking some something go too far. If a greatest city, just like New York or London, they can elect their people, they elect their mayor. 
So why can't Hong Kong? We just hope to have free election to use our votes to elect our government. Of course, that's the long-term goal. But the short-term goal right now, of course, is short, uh, stop the implementation of the national security law. And uh, uh, frankly speaking, if Beijing do not introduce the national security law, I don't believe uh, President Trump will hold a press conference and raise the idea to sanction uh, to targeted red capitals and etc. And I also call on world leaders to uh, reveal is there any possibility for them to impose any partial economic sanction, uh, not to affect Hong Kongers, but to send a warning signal to red capitals or pro-China tycoons. They should not be the loyalists of Beijing and erodes on the status of Hong Kong because uh, that's not the way out. And it would just turn Hong Kong to be a nightmare if the national security legislation passed. Businesses are backing Beijing, whether it's HSBC, Jardine, we have heard from major uh, businessmen now backing the security legislation, saying that that would bring some certainty to Hong Kong, an economy that's in free fall, especially not only because of the protests, but also because of the pandemic. Is this the price worth paying when so many Hong Kong people are hurting and their livelihoods are being hurt? Um, just make it clear, in 2019 summer, when more than millions of Hong Kongers took to the street, no one expected the COVID-19 would happen in 2020. And even in the past few months, uh, we just observed how Beijing took advantage during the uh, coronavirus export from Wuhan to all over the world. When the world needed to deal with the pandemic, Beijing just took advantage from it and to try to introduce this evil law to Hong Kong. And uh, of course, uh, we know no matter uh, national security law, or a uh, different kind of discussion about the sanction, it will also uh, cause some of the impact to Hong Kong uh, people uh, daily life. But I think the majority consensus of Hong Kong is, is really clear how we strongly oppose the national security legislation. And we urge Beijing to stop implement it to Hong Kong. Uh, for example, for the security law, uh, it will claim that they ban subversion. But what is mean by subversion, according to the understanding or the framework of Beijing, uh, subversion all over the world might be quite common in the national security law in different countries. But according to the framework of Beijing, once you call on Carrie Lam, the city's leader, to step down or criticize Xi Jinping, it will also recognize as kind of subversion. And I would say that now the handover agreement guarantee uh, of the high degree of autonomy until 2047, uh, which is really disappointed, and it seems that it already Joshua, ends on 2020. The fact, and the, f the fact remains that these businesses are in Hong Kong because they want stability. They want this freedom to do their business. Because the protests have been going on now for about a year, they haven't really been able to do that. There's been a high level of uncertainty now with the pandemic. If these businesses decide to leave, Hong Kong will lose its status as a financial hub. Are you willing to pay the price? Um, I think it will communist regime willing to take the price, especially Hong Kong is being recognized as the uh, most critical uh, offshore center. And also uh, this global city uh, is uh, the unique place under the hardline rule of Beijing still and a certain degree of freedom. And uh, I would say that the scale of protest in the past few months already reduced due to the pandemic. So it is hard to blame on the protester or blame on the victim uh, to say that it's because of the scale of the protest result in uh, investor uh, decide to leave Hong Kong. But the most critical issue is uh, until this stage, we still have, uh, we still even don't know that uh, we'll Beijing appointed secret police to uh, arrest people in Hong Kong. And will the prosecution of the national security law take place in mainland China? And as the one who have been jailed for three times in Hong Kong, uh, I think dissident protesters or even journalists are worried that we might need to face the jail sentence in Beijing instead of this global city. And that's the threat that we never imagined in the past.